Sadhguru Jagi Vasudev is a realized master, mystic, and yogi. He has shown the way for people to attain to their natural joy and to live life with experience from one's own inner nature. His presence is filled with grace and compassion. Sadhguru's scientific approach towards spirituality and work towards the upliftment of humanity have received accolades worldwide. The words that come from him in intensity and utmost clarity, from his deep understanding and wisdom, can change the very core of the being. Belonging to no particular tradition, Sadhguru incorporates what is most valid for the modern person from the spiritual sciences. His work, an outpouring of his blissfulness, finds expression in the form of a ceaseless offering to help all beings. Available to all who are willing, Sadhguru's life is an invitation to the divine through individual transformation. Welcome to the silent revolution of self-realization. Existence happens in two different dimensions. One is uh, the non-dual oneness of the existence on one level and the many manifestations of the dual. All the manifestations the various types of manifestations that you see as life today, fundamentally rooted in the duality. Because there is two, there is many. If there was one, there would have been only one. When I say two, the duality is like light and darkness, male and female, life and death. Because the two is there, all the games are happening. If there was only one, there wouldn't be any game, there would be just existence. The many manifestations, as I said, are fundamentally rooted in the duality. 
Once duality comes, sex comes. When I say sex, probably in most people's mind, the man is thinking of a woman, the woman is thinking of a man. It's not like that. The birds are blooming, it is sex because what you call a sex is the duality is trying to meet and in the process of the duality meeting, there are also certain functions that the nature wants to fulfill like procreation and survival of the, that species. Always the duality is trying to meet because what was one has manifested itself as two. Now there is a longing to become one all the time. This longing to become one finds expression in many ways. When you are young and your intelligence is hijacked by your hormones, sex will be the way, physical sex will be the way. When you become middle-aged, when your intelligence is hijacked by your emotion, then love is the way. When you transcend all this, then if you seek the same union in a much higher level of awareness, then we say it's yoga or the divine, there are many names. Now, these two energies which uh, in the human race we are calling as male and female, it's in every way we are referring to the same way. Always constantly trying to come together. At the same time, except for this longing to be together, there is nothing common between them. They are lovers and enemies at the same time. Constantly this is going on because they are opposites. If they look for similarities, there is nowhere, no common ground. but. The attraction of the opposite is always there. What you call as opposite is always a relative thing. The whole process of what we are referring to as sex is just two opposites making an attempt to become one. The intention of sex is good but the method is hopeless. Never are you going to be really become one. The intention is fine that you want to become one, but the method is quite hopeless, isn't it? Pleasure is involved, so it draws people, but oneness never really came. So we are trying to meet in other areas of emotion and intellect, trying to find some common ground. We like the same things, we like the same kind of ice cream, we like the same color. Like this people are trying to find a common ground, but actually there is no common ground. Unless you understand that there is no common ground, it is just that you learn to enjoy the opposite. It just becomes a hopeless thing. To make a simple physical act beautiful, we have invented all kinds of decorations around it. <clears throat> Without those decorations, most people would be unwilling to get into this physical act. Lot of people cannot simply face the basic physical act as it is because Unless it's decorated, they will feel obscene, they will feel like an animal, they will feel so basic and physical, which is the reality. In some way we are trying to cloud our vision of reality with lots of decorations. We always are add emotion to it because without emotion it would be ugly. Today in the modern world, see sex is a natural thing. 
sexuality is invented by you. Do you understand? <laughs> Sex is a natural thing, it's physical, it's there in the body. But sexuality is something that you invented, you created, it's psychological. There is no such thing, it is something created by you. Today, this is sweeping the world. It is no more healthy, in so many ways it's become sick. Because if sex is in the body, it's fine, it's beautiful. The moment it enters your mind, it becomes a perversion. It has no business with your mind, it has something to do with your body. If it's in the body, it will just fall into its natural place where it belongs. It is a small aspect of you, but today it has become a huge aspect. It has just become life itself. If you look at the modern societies now, I would say probably ninety percent of human energy is being spent either pursuing sex or avoiding sex, whichever way. <laughs> yes, sir? <laughs> whichever way, that has become a huge aspect. It is just a small thing. If you look at a man and a woman, physiologically it is just a small difference. Like somebody said, either the pocket is in or the pocket is out. With one the equipment is inbuilt, with one another the equipment is hanging out. You made such a big issue out of it, you know. <laughs> this simple physical process, we are trying to make it so many things which it is not. It is just nature strict to reproduce because if this attraction was not there, you wouldn't reproduce. The species would end right now. But now we made such a distinction between man and woman as if they are two separate species. We are going about treating everything, man and woman separately, as if they are two separate species, they are not the same species. No other creature on the planet has this kind of problem with their sex as man has, isn't it? When they have it in their body, they have it, otherwise they are free from it. But with humans, it is on their mind all the time, endlessly. One big reason why this has happened is, somewhere in the past, especially your religions, especially in the West, it is not so much in the East, especially in the West, your religions went about denying a simple physical process to such an extent that they even have to make it so ugly that they could not accept the simple biology of a human being. See, religion means liberation, isn't it? Yes? But religion means freedom. How can there be liberation? How can there be freedom when you cannot even accept the biology of a human being? They could not even accept the simple biology of a human being. So we went on saying that instead of looking beyond the limitations of the biological process, we tried to deny the biological process. We went about saying, if somebody is holy, if somebody is really sacred, he cannot be born out of it, he is born without it. Now, once you do not accept the simple biological processes, that is where the bondage began. That is where in so many ways, once you could not accept the simple biological differences between a man and a woman and what happens, that is where the whole exploitation of the woman started. If we had no problem with our biology, then we would, know, we, would, we would not make a distinction between who is who, everybody would be known for what they are worth, isn't it? Now whether somebody was born to your virgin or a prostitute, what's your problem? What the man is worth is all that matters, isn't it? 
So whether somebody is a man or woman, what's your problem? What that person is worth, that's all that should matter to you. Only because you could not accept the simple biological processes, that's where the distinction, that's where all the exploitation started. And unfortunately, these few religions always denied simple biology of life. You don't have to make the biology sacred, nor do you have to make it filthy. It is simply there, it's life. It is through that that you exist. It is neither filthy nor is it sacred, it's just life. If you know how to live it without decorating it or without making it ugly, it has a beauty of its own. Now the biological process, which you are referring to as sex is simply, fundamentally it's reproductive. But if there was no sexual difference, if there was no sexual attraction between man and woman, I want you to know this, by now man would have killed all the women on the planet. Not one would have existed, they would be extinct by now. Only because there is a deep need He's kept her alive. The physical strength of the man gives him the power to physically destroy the woman. If he had no need, he would have destroyed her long ago. Yes or no? Definitely it would have happened. Only because there is a deep need within him. Even though, see anything that is physically weaker than him, he's gone about destroying, isn't it? Yes or no? Anything that is physically weaker than him, he's gone about destroying. The same would have happened to the woman, only because there is a need, the survival has happened. Now, this need between the sexes, this need between the two biological entities of the same species, is fine as a survival process. But if you're seeking anything beyond survival, it'll never be enough. Even people who are into this process or even though this process is active in people in different levels, without the decorations of emotion, they were not willing to go through it. If you discover in a certain relationship, a sex-based relationship. Now unfortunately in the Western countries it has happened this way, if you utter the word relationship, they'd simply think it has to be sex-based. <laughs> yes? Nothing else is a relationship, only man, woman or whatever. Some sex-based relationship is the only relationship, this is unfortunate. This has happened because your identification with the body has become so strong. As you get more and more identified with the body, sex or sexuality becomes more and more important. As you become less and less identified with the body, you will see the sex recedes. You see in your own societies, somebody becomes very intellectually active, he becomes identified with his intellectual process. Do you see the need for sex recedes in that man? Somebody who is physically identified with his body, in him the needs are very heavy. It's always so. Where you are identified, it is through that everything functions in you. So, in any relationship, sex-based relationship, if you discover one day that actually in the other person there is no emotion. It is simply physical. Suddenly you feel that you are being used. Yes, is it so? After all, it is sex, it is physical. That's all it can be. But without the decorations of emotion, you will feel that it's not good enough, it's an abuse. In sex-based relationships, what is usually passing off as love is just a mutual benefit scheme. You give me this, I'll give you that. If you don't give me that, I won't give you this. It's like this. 
One day, Shankaran Pillai went to the park. Shankaran Pillai means it's a common name in India. Went to the park. There on one of the stone benches, a pretty woman was sitting. He also went and settled down on the same bench. After a few minutes, he moved closer. She moved little away. Again he moved closer. She moved little away. Again he moved closer. She moved little away. Now she's at the end of the bench. The only choice she has is either she has to get up and go or she has to do something else. Again he moved closer. Now she pushed him away. <laughs> Shankaran Pillai waited for a few moments. It was evening, sun was setting. You know, when the sun is setting, the twilight, those are the times you can say things and make people believe. <laughs> yes. When the sun is up there, nobody's going to believe you. <laughs> so, Shankaran Pillai went down on his knees and told her, I love you. I love you like I have never loved anybody in my life. The woman is always a fool for love, she melted. Nature took over, things happened. Then, it is becoming 7.45. He got up in a hurry and he said, I need to go, I need to go. What? You're going? You said you loved me. In her understanding, the moment he utters the word, I love you, they have become one. He said, no, no, I need to go, my wife will be waiting. <laughs> Eight o'clock is dinner time at home. So, I love you is a mantra. When a person transcends the limitations of his duality, the struggle of the duality is gone in him, only then the divine manifests itself. What you are referring to as the divine, it's a much abused word I know, but what you are referring to as the divine, if there is something divine, where should it be or where can it be? Hmm? It's a question. I just want to help you to look at things, not just, you know, I am not propounding any theory or philosophy. I know so many philosophies are being propounded just to support people's sexuality. I don't see why you need a philosophy to have sex. It's just biology. You don't need a philosophy, isn't it? <laughs> but people are always propounding philosophies <laughs> to have sex. <laughs> so no philosophy, just be with me and look, I want you to look at it. Don't make a theory out of it. <laughs> First thing you make something which is so simple and basic, right and wrong, then you want to find a philosophy to subvert the wrong and ha still have it. <laughs> it's unnecessary, all these complications. If you just see the simplicity of what it is, it'll take… it'll become a simple part of your life. If you make it complex, it becomes an unnecessarily large part of your life, you know. Now, if there is divine, where can it be? Where can it be? <coughs> yes? If there is something that you can refer to as the divine, it has to be everywhere, isn't it? If it's just within you or just within me or just in my temple and just in your temple, it's no good, isn't it? If there is something that you can refer to as divine, it has to be everywhere. If something is everywhere, what faculty do you have to know it? Yes, what faculty do you have to experience something which is everywhere? Because right now, 
The only faculties of experience within you are the five senses. The five sense organs cannot experience anything if there is no perspective or if there is no comparison. See, only because there is darkness, you know what is light. If there was no darkness, you wouldn't know what is light, isn't it? This is the way your eyes are made. Only because there is silence, now you know what is sound. Otherwise, your ears wouldn't be able to perceive. Your sense organs always perceive everything in comparison, always in bits and pieces. It does not perceive anything in its totality. Always it perceives just one side of everything. Please see. Is it so? Right now, if I show you my palm, if, I, if you see this, you can't see this. If you see this, you cannot see this. This is the way your eyes are made, isn't it? Once there was a philosopher fish. What a fish, a philosopher? Yes. Is there anybody who is not a philosopher? Everybody has a philosophy for whatever they are doing, isn't it? If you want, you just go to the drunkard on the street, ask him, why are you drinking like this? He has a solid philosophy as to why he is drinking. Yes, sir? You stop a thief and ask him, why are you a thief? He's got a solid philosophy as to why he's a thief. You go and ask a sex maniac why he's like that, he's got a solid philosophy too. For whatever nonsense that anybody is doing, they have the support of a philosophy of their own. Without a philosophy, you cannot continue to do stupid things all your life. Your intelligence will not allow you to do it. If you have a philosophy, you can go on doing the same thing every day, not thinking about anything. Especially if you get God's stamp on your philosophy, you don't have to turn back and look, you can just go on doing the same stupid things endlessly. Yes? Yes or no? The moment you get God's stamp on your philosophy, you are through. You don't have to use your intelligence anymore. You don't have to wonder what nonsense are you doing with your life. You are just clear. Do you see the clarity on such people's faces? This is so with anybody. It doesn't matter which religion, which nonsense you belong to. The moment you get God's stamp on what you believe in, that's it. You don't have to apply your intelligence and see what are you doing with life. You can just go on. So even a fish is a philosopher. One day this philosopher fish is in great misery, sitting in one corner and thinking badly. You know, I th I see that lot of people are into lots of thinking here, endless thinking, <laughs> it's all flying around here, your thoughts. <laughs> so into deep thinking and misery, another fish came by and he asked, Oh philosopher, why are you so miserable? What has happened to you? He said, Oh no, I am in deep trouble. What's the trouble? He said, Wherever I go, people are talking about the ocean. I wanted to see this ocean, so I went every which way I could go, but I don't see the ocean. Where is it? Everybody is talking about it. Now the problem is he is in the ocean, he is part of the ocean, he is ocean in so many ways. Now no way to perceive it. If you are outside, you could see this is the ocean, this is not. But when you are in it, you don't know how. Right now, the same situation is with the divine. When there is nothing to compare, okay, this is divine, this is something else, you could recognize. But now if divine… as you said, if divine is everywhere, how will you recognize it? How will you experience it? Because the only way you can experience life right now is through five sense organs. Yes, is it so? So that which is everywhere, how to experience that, how to know that? V within the limitations of the five sense organs, there is no possibility. Now, seeking the divine 
is not something that you have to start as a project now. From the moment of your birth, the seeking is happening, but unconsciously. It is just that the choice that you have is either you can seek it unconsciously or you can seek it consciously. If you seek it unconsciously, we can call it sex. One expression of unconscious seeking of the divine is called sex, one expression of it. If it becomes a conscious expression, if your seeking finds a conscious expression, then we call it a spiritual process. Generally, if it is looked at as a science, then we say it's yoga. I know probably in your mind yoga means twisting your body this way or that way. No, the word yoga means to become one. That's what love means, that's what sex means, whether you're seeking it physically or emotionally or truly seeking oneness beyond all these limitations. If you are seeking it beyond all the limitations of your body, emotion and thought, then we call it yoga. If you are seeking it with the physical body, physical bodies will always remain two, no matter what you do. Yes? All kinds of weird things people are trying to do in the name of sex, because somewhere they want to find some unity, but it won't happen. A few moments of fake unity will come and then people fall apart. It is bound to happen, isn't it? Physical entities can never become one. It doesn't matter how much they try. Unless you transcend the physical, there is no question of oneness. Now, I don't want any oneness, I'm just seeking pleasure. That is also okay, but it is just that you will see it's not enough. I am not saying there's anything wrong with it. It is just that this human being will not be satisfied with it. It wants something more. Isn't it so? Yes? Just the physical pleasure is not enough. It wants something more. What is that something more? Something more than what this little person has become. Physical body means a bondage because in this vast existence, this little body is a separate entity. If you are identified only with this little body, then there is a sense of insecurity, there is a sense of feeling lost. I would say at least sixty percent of the sex in the world is happening out of insecurity and nothing else. Not out of love, not out of anything else, not even for pleasure. It is insecurity. Two bodies coming together feels little secure for at least a few moments. Do you see most relationships, sex-based relationships are made because otherwise people are lost by themselves. Isn't it so? By themselves they're totally lost. They don't know how to be by themselves. It's not for love, it's not for joy, because there's some sense of security in two bodies coming together. One thing I see is, it is… See, with all the effluence, for example, here on the streets what I'm seeing is, with all this affluence, with all the comfort that has come to the Western societies compared to other parts of the world, you see so much more insecurity on people's faces than anywhere else in the world. This is the reality. If you have not traveled around, this is actually the reality. Here on the streets of a metropolis like Paris, you see so much more insecurity on people's faces than a beggar on the street in the eastern countries. It is so. This has happened simply because slowly the cultures took on too much of physical identity, too much identified with their own physical body. The more and more you get identified with your physical body, the more and more insecure you become because this body is never safe. Next moment it may be anything, isn't it? Once your identification is limited to the physical body, then insecurity is the natural way and 
naturally the need for sex will increase dramatically when people are insecure. Now seeking a spiritual process does not mean going to the temple, does not mean believing what your father said, does not mean believing what your priest said, does not mean believing what your book said, whatever the so-called sacred books of the world. It simply means that you are seeking tools to go beyond the limitations of five sense perceptions and experience something more than the physical. That's what spiritual process means. You are my perfect mirror, you show me what I'm not in the endless pit of what once was me. Layer and layer, you peel off me. The pain it is, but the joy it brings. So thank you for showing me what I'm not, for showing me.